Friends, distal humerus fractures often occur in variable severity. Sometimes the fractures are simple, sometimes there is metaphyseal combination, and sometimes there is articular combination as well. And whenever there is articular combination, the fracture becomes a complex one. Often there is difficulty in localizing the fragment, their appropriate alignment, and the combination in the notch part of the trochlea often complicates the situation. So in today's video, I will be talking about some basic tips that will help you in handling similar injuries especially when there is extensive articular combination so first of all we have to rule out any life-threatening or limb-threatening injuries in these patients because in high energy trauma the distal humerus fractures can be associated with the neurovascular damage as well so whenever the patient is coming you have to examine the patient as a whole and also examine the affected limb so that other injuries are also ruled out and when these patients are referred to you from any other center do not forget to open the slab and examine the skin like here you see there is extensive articular combination the relationship between the medial condyle trochlea and capitulum is all disrupted there is some combination here but we are not sure about the skin condition and the patient limb is in plaster so when we examine the skin we find this so often there is an open wound which is complicating the situation you see the wound is on the medial side and there are multiple puncture wounds in this area on the lateral side also and further on the medial side here as well so we have to plan our skin incision in such a manner that it is incorporating this wound as well then you have to zoom in the x-ray to see what are the major fragments that you are going to address and find their relationships in ct scan so here you see there appears to be a large lateral condylar chunk which probably includes the capillum as well then there is some deficiency here there is some comminuted fragment here which is probably the metaphyseal or diaphyseal because we don't see these smooth margins like this so probably this doesn't appear to be articular it could be a part of the olecranon fossa or could be something else also and there is some haziness here again because of the articular combination then we see a major fragment of the trochlea here and there is some hidden fragment here which we are not sure what is its relationship then we see the medial condyle here and this small fragment probably signifies an old injury of the medial epicondyle because the margins appear to be sclerotic so grossly these are the fragments the lateral condyle then we see this intermediate fragment which is probably of the olecranon fossa or metaphyseal region these dots signify some articular combination then we see the trochlear fragment which is on the medial side then we see the medial condyle here and this small fragment signifies an old injury to the medial epicondyle as we see the margins are sclerotic the relationship of the lateral condyle and the radial head appears to be maintained that means the ligamentous attachment between the lateral condyle and the proximal ulna and radius are still preserved that means the lateral collateral ligament complex appears to be intact and is maintained with the lateral condyle but here you see the trochlear fragment is not well aligned with the proximal ulna that means either this bony fragment is completely independent of the medial condyle or there is some ligamentous injury so grossly these are the fragments but we can't see everything in x-ray we need extra imaging so a ct is mandatory so whenever you are getting a CT done, first look at the 3D reconstruction images. Why? Because they will grossly complete the information that you have gained from the X-ray. Like here we see, we are starting from the medial side. So this is a large medial condylar chunk. And this small fragment of the old fracture of the medial epicondyle. Then we go slightly posteromedially. Here we see this medial side of the trochlea appears to be split and as we go more posteriorly we see the olecranon which appears to be intact there is small fragment here which represents this fragment again it is probably the extra article fragment as we go more posterolaterally we see the lateral condylar chunk this fragment appears to be somewhat of large size that means there is no combination in this zone we see that some fragments which should have been here and here is missing that means there is some bone loss from the diaphyseal side because of the open nature of this injury and as we go more laterally we should be able to see the capillum and here we see the capillum capillum is intact and is aligned with the lateral condyle and as we go more anteriorly we see the radial head and the coronoid so coronoid is also intact 
but the relationship of this proximal ulna and the cochlear fragment is disrupted. While the lateral side appears to be satisfactory, there may be potential ligamentous injury on the medial side, which needs to be repaired when doing the fixation. And 2D images are equally important when we need to see any secondary fracture lines. Suppose in 3D images, we see the gross picture, but secondary fracture lines, that means undisplaced fractures or incomplete fractures often get missed in 3D imaging and in X-rays. So 2D images are equally important. So here we are seeing the sagittal cut in which we are going from lateral side to the medial side. On lateral side, we are seeing the capitulum. So the capitulum and the lateral condyle appear to be in single block. There is no separate capitulum fracture, but there is some posterior combination on the lateral condyle side. And as we go more medially, we are able to see the combination between the capitulum and the trochlea and this fragment is probably from the anterior side or part of the olecranon fossa that we have to see during the surgery. The olecranon and the coronoid appear to be intact and as we go more medially this part represents the two segments of the trochlea which are split. So here is one, here is the other and as we go more medially we should be able to see the medial condyle. So this part is the medial condyle and the relationship between the medial condyle and the trochlea appears to be disrupted. This was a small fragment of the non-union of the medial epicondyle, which is probably an old injury. In coronal cut also, we should be able to see all the details that we have seen earlier and we are searching for any potential fracture lines which can alert us to be more cautious when placing the K-wires and screws. So the lateral condyle chunk appears to be single block along with the capillum. There is no secondary fracture line on the lateral side. And on the medial side, the medial condyle appears to be a single block, but there is no communication with the trochlea. That means medial side is not communicating with the trochlea. The trochlea is a separate fragment than the medial condyle. You see the medial epicondylar margins should be in continuity with the margins of the trochlea but here there is some overriding that means the relationship is disrupted and this was split in the trochlea and this was a small non-union fragment of the medial epicondyle so more or less the picture is similar to what we have seen in the 3d imaging and the x-rays now seeing the axial cut again for the same purpose to rule out any missed fracture line in the 3d imaging and the x-rays so the picture is quite clear we have similar injuries that we have seen in the other cuts this is the split in the trochlea. This is one segment of the trochlea and this is the other segment of the trochlea. They are not in quantity. We see a fracture line here and the blocks are in different plane. This is medial condyle, this is lateral condyle. So this is the final picture which is giving information about the status of the articular blocks. So lateral side articular block is intact while medial side articular block is comminuted and there is some combination in between the capitulum and the trochlea and the relationship of the medial condyle with the trochlea is not normal. So we have to keep all these things in mind when planning our fixation. So the stepwise approach in these cases is to start IV antibiotics initially when the patient presents so that the risk of post-operative wound infection is reduced and there is no colonization of the bacteria inside the open wound and immediately you have to take the patient for debridement and if the wound appears to be a contaminated then you probably have to wait for some time wait for the blood parameters ESR and CRP to fall down to normal levels before committing to the definitive fixation but if you see that the wound is a healthy one there is no contamination then you can definitely go for early fixation with good debridement as the definitive measure. And whenever in these patients you have contaminated wound which preclude the definitive fixation with plating and other major hardware, then you can definitely go for reconstruction of the articular block in which you place multiple key wires or small screws to at least secure the articular block. Then that articular block can be definitively fixed with the remaining part of the metaphysis and diaphysis at a later stage so that the joint part is not compromised. And when you are having any doubt, you can use the local antibiotic delivery measures like antibiotic stimulan or antibiotic cement beads whenever you have doubt about the contamination status of the wound. And you have to avoid any periosteal stripping, avoid excessive manipulation of the fragments and avoid the removal of soft tissue attachments between the articular fragments and the metaphysis because they often tell you about the normal relationship of the condylar chunks with the articular block. So avoid any soft tissue disruption in the periarticular area because that can actually complicate the fracture pattern. Also, you have to give such kind of fixation that you permit early range of motion exercises in these patients. 
otherwise the patient will land up in elbow stiffness and there is often debate about the plating pattern whether to go 90-90 or 180-180 so you need to see the fracture pattern here we see that the posterior part of the fracture is comminuted and the posterior surface is not uniform one there is some combination here and the posterior surface is not intact on the lateral side and when we place the 180-180 plate that means a parallel plate on the lateral side the screws are going from lateral to medial so this whole block of capitulum will remain vacant so your screw purchase will be suboptimal because it is going through the comminuted zone it is not going through the intact zone so probably in such cases the 9090 plating is better because it is giving you multi-planar stability so in 9090 plating the lateral side plate will give you a hold in this unoccupied area of the capitulum which is having good strong bone and also if you use the plate with a flange like this it is giving you advantage of the 9090 as well as 180 plating because this flange is actually covering the lateral surface not the posterior lateral surface and the screws will be going like this that means we are now having advantage of both the lateral as well as posterior lateral plating so whenever there is a simple condylar fragment whenever there are articular fragments are simple one and there is no extensive combination definitely we can go for 180 180 plating like this but whenever the fracture pattern is in multiple planes that means there is coronal component as well and there is sagittal component as well like we saw that the trochlea fragment is split in those cases it is preferable to use multi-planar stability construct like 1990 plating now in such cases the articular exposure is critical if your olecranon osteotomy is not a correct one you will definitely struggle for adequate visualization you have to locate this bare area which is the junction between the olecranon and the coronoid so what you can do you can just pass an artery process from the olecranon fossa towards the coronoid and the moment you find the apex of these two anatomical landmarks is the area where you should go for the osteotomy so the osteotomy should be done here like this so this is the junction of two parts and the osteotomy should be somewhat like this the apex has to be anterior because it's a chevron kind of osteotomy and that will help in further repair with the tension band wiring and for this trochlear split you need extra Herbert screws or headless cancel screws and if cost issue is there then you can use the 2.7 m locking screws also that are available with the distal humerus splitting set they all can be used for fixation of this split fracture 